Would you like to have a flick that consistently went over 100 kilometers per hour every time? Having a good flick in Rocket League is both satisfying and nasty to defend. There are a lot of variations on just this one facet of play. Front flip flicks, back flip flicks, 45 degree, 90 degree, 180 degree, musty, breezy, the list goes on. But for the purpose of this video, we're going to be looking at a very specific type of flick. One popularized by a young French player named Moxie. Obviously, it's nearly impossible to do the exact same thing at the exact same angle every single time, but something that sets his flick apart from the standard 45 degree flicks are his techniques and his power which he's able to generate consistently. And because I'm an insane person who likes to obsess over things, I've spent over a month analyzing his footage, breaking down step by step what he's doing, and putting all of that info into a tutorial I could use to teach you all. Now, despite what others call it after watching and plagiarizing someone else's work, this is not a 45 degree boomer flick. It is similar yes, but the difference between that flick and this one is the contact we make with the ball. The boomer flick has more of what I would call a fling or a launch versus a strike. That isn't to say that technique can't be successful in this regard, but if the goal is to emulate what Moxie is doing, then you have to be aware of how the ball and the car are interacting. In a boomer flick, the ball launches or flings from the car almost gunshot-like by making a very quick double contact. This was popularized by Jazer a few years ago, and while the mechanic is very similar to perform, there's a nuance that separates them from being the same, so let's get into it. First, we put the ball on our car, dribble it for a quick second, and then flick it into the goal. Boom. Easy. Thank you. Please like and subscribe. Dear God, if only. Now, the entire mechanic itself is a little more difficult to pull off than your standard flicks, but thankfully the parts to learning it aren't. Like always, I find it best to break everything down, find ways to provide real-time feedback to what you're doing, and help give you the steps to execute it on your own. Before we get into the meat of the flick itself, I want to take a quick moment to talk about ground dribbling and provide some info that really helped me understand this part of the mechanic. Way back when, Rocket Science put out a video discussing ball and car interactions, specifically dribbling. This was interesting to note because while the car has a rectangular hitbox, one would assume that having the ball sitting on top of the car would simply leave the ball in a static point of rest. What was determined, however, was that the interaction between balancing the ball on top of the car acted more like one ball balancing on top of another ball. This explains why it seems as though the ball never wants to stay in one spot and can fall off nearly any direction of the car based on you and the ball's momentum. I understand if you don't feel like this is important to learning flicks, but from my experience, the more you understand the relationship between the ball and the car, the more or you can use this awareness to build consistency. Before we start learning flicks, the most obvious piece of advice is going to be putting a considerable amount of time into dribbling. I agree with this and will do you one better as I've provided another training pack for this video that is going to take you from basic dribbling to advanced in-game situations in which you'll have to catch the ball in order to set up your flicks. I encourage taking this slow to build out your feel for the ball. Before you get into making big sweeping or sharp turns, I find it best to do this at a speed you're comfortable with first and then slowly build up as you progress. After you've gotten the hang of this part, we can work on the pre-flick setup. Now, I have a really big problem with the way most of the people teach this part because they all give the same piece of advice. You'll want to have the ball resting on the sweet spot of the car. In my opinion, this isn't a good way to teach players what or where it really is because unless you have wildly different camera settings than everyone else, you're probably like 99.9% .9 of players that are exclusively looking at the ass end of their car during this part. Telling me the place I want the ball to be is between the windshield and the hood isn't all that helpful if I can't properly see whether or not I'm doing it correctly. Instead, I implore all of you to use the single best feedback system the game offers you, the ball indicator. For the remainder of the video, this will be the primary point of focus when it comes to the car and the ball interaction. So what does the sweet spot look like in relation to the car and the ball indicator? About like this. The majority of the car is inside the indicator circle, with the back wheels being either slightly on or outside the back end of the circle. As we spin the camera around, we can see that the ball is exactly where we want it to be between the windshield and the hood. But why do we want the ball to be here? This isn't where we want the ball to be for every flick, of course, but for the purpose of this particular flick and many like it, let me explain why. In order to perform this and most flicks, you'll want to be traveling the same speed as the ball. Had you put some time into dribbling before this point, you're aware of how difficult this can be to do. Why it's called the sweet spot and what it does for the ball is provide the optimal location for the ball to be placed while you gather speed and it will stick close to your car after you jump. The window for this can vary depending on your speed and control, but once the ball is properly settled on this position of the car, further indicated by the absence of contact sparks the car receives from the ball, we now have, for however brief a moment, complete control of the ball. I'm sure at this point you've already been drilling just dribbling the ball, so I'd like to add a second step to that drill. Once you get the ball into the sweet spot and the ball is completely settled, you'll want to practice jumping with the ball. 
both at a slower speed and at a faster speed. This is to familiarize yourself with the timings between getting control and taking the ball into the air. You'll know you've done this correctly when you and the ball both lift into the air at roughly the same speed and heights relative to one another. Kudos if you can perform this and land back on the ground and regain control of the ball. If you feel like you have this part down, then it's now time for the money shot, learning the flick. This has a couple of very key and very specific parts, so please keep each of these in mind as you progress through these steps. The first and absolutely essential thing you're going to need is to have a bound directional air roll. This can be done on either side, so I strongly encourage you to pick the side that feels more comfortable to you. I use air roll left bound to my L1, which you can see from my controller overlay. If at any time I reference a directional movement, please keep that in mind and simply invert the direction if you're an air roll right player. Once you have that, we can now move on to step number one. First, we need to have the ball slightly lower on the sweet spot moving at a decent bit of pace. Because the window can be small, the ability to set up and execute the shot is both its strength and its most difficult to pull off. I find a good indicator for my window of execution is just before the ball would begin to roll off the front of my car. This ensures that when I jump while holding the ball, my car is going to naturally cradle it as we lift into the air and is just another way to use in-game feedback to inform my timing windows. To help generate more power, you can even boost while you jump and into the flick. Before we jump, however, we're going to need to begin our wrap around the ball while simultaneously creating a small bit of distance from the ball. How Moxie is able to generate so much power from his flicks is because of this wrapping technique mixed with his use of air roll. To understand why this is important, we first need to understand what generates the most amount of power in regards to flicks. When performing just a standard 45 or 90 degree flick, to achieve the highest amount of power, your car will need to be traveling upwards with the ball but also have a small bit of space between it and the ball. The reason for this is in order for the car to transfer max power to the ball, you need to strike the ball while the car is in the middle of its flipping rotation. This means you'll need to position your car in a way that allows for the ball to be struck by the car and we do this by either letting the ball get a little ahead of our path or pulling the car away from the ball just before flipping. Because this setup can take a moment to execute, Moxie instead bypasses this by air rolling his car into the flicking position with air roll and it allows him to have a quick release window from the moment of initiation to execution as well as a low launch angle. So how do we learn this? We do this by turning a slight bit to the opposite side where we want to turn. Since the ball is going to be on the left side of the car, we first need to create a slight offset from the center by maneuvering the ball barely to the right just before I turn and jump. If you've done this quickly enough, it shouldn't disrupt your ability to keep the ball cradled on takeoff. As we move into our attack position, we want to begin to turn our car to the right and jump, creating an angle with the ball around 30 degrees from center. The moment after we jump, we want to hold down air roll and swing the left stick from about the 4 o'clock position to around the 6 o'clock position. This will create the pseudo tornado spin motion we need to set up the flick. I like to visualize the next bit as I found it helped me to pull this off more consistently. The reason we want to turn just before we jump and get our car into position is because we want to try and hit the ball with a very specific part of the car, the opposite front fender. The reason for this is twofold. The first being that anytime the ball is hit with a part of the hitbox which meets at a hard angle, it generates a high amount of resistance and thus a large amount of power. Second, if we observe where the center of mass on the car is, this point of the car is the absolute furthest point from said center of mass, meaning it can generate the highest amount of speed and power in a small amount of time. Now that we have our car turned up and away from the ball, provided you maintained your speed and positioning with the ball, creating that small bit of separation, it's now time for the flick. With our stick wrapped around to the bottom left or 6 o'clock position, we want to perform a flip. This backflip is where all of the power comes from. To do this most effectively, we want to hold our stick down and to the left, continuing to hold our air roll as we flip, and then quickly cancel our flip by shifting or swinging our left stick up and to the right. This helps us execute the flip as well as giving our car a reposition for recovery. Provided you've done all these things correctly, the front opposite fender will strike the ball and hurl that mofo towards the net. This would be the end where I tell you to go practice this, but there are some nuances to this technique that I wanted to go over before I turn you loose. First of all, what helps to generate the most powerful and consistent flick is one particular thing that I didn't realize for quite some time but has since changed the way I practice this mechanic. The moment you want to be flipping your car towards the ball is at a point in which your car is beginning to point upwards from the tornado spin. It's at this point you're able to flip into the ball and strike it with that front fender, generating incredible amounts of power. This doesn't just apply to this flick either. Things like 90 and 180 degree flicks also apply to this. 
I suggest playing around with this piece of information and seeing what kinds of moves you can pull off. The most vital part to pulling off this flick consistently is spacing. I'm aware up to this point we've made a huge push into moving the same speed as the ball both on the ground and in the air. The hardest part about our flip into the ball is being close enough to the ball that it sticks with us but far enough that our car has the room to rotate around in the flip in order to make contact with the front fender. I regret that I haven't been able to provide a secret for this other than timing behind the ball. And lastly, if you're looking to learn how to place these shots either left or right of the goal, then you'll want to know where your car should be in order to do this. If you want the ball to be more left, you want to skip the first part where we try and align the car up on the left side of the ball and instead put the ball more on the left center position of the hood. Then when you backflip, provided you're in the correct position, the ball will go towards the left. For the right side, you'll want to position more on the left of the ball on your takeoff and delay the flip for just a moment. Again, if your positioning is correct when you flip, the ball will go towards the right side of the goal. This bit is quite advanced given just how hard it is to pull this flick off on its own, but once you've begun to get more comfortable with the mechanic, you can use this to begin incorporating placement. I hope this shot won't take you as long to get down as it did for me since you'll already know what it is you'll need to do in order to pull this off. I can't claim this is going to change your game or make you a god in ones, but it is a fun technique to practice in any case. Like I mentioned, I put together a nice progressive training pack that you can use to help you work on this flick as well as setting up flicks in other positions and overall ball handling slash dribble practice. Because this is the hardest part to get down, both from a mechanics and a timing perspective, I've tried my best to give you all a shot in a training pack that has a bit of the speed flip treatment. Just like that mechanic, the ball will only go into the goal if you execute the air roll slash backwards diagonal flip correctly. This will be hard and it will be frustrating, but trust me, once you get this part down, being able to pull off the flick becomes so much easier to do consistently. Hell, anytime I feel like I'm struggling to flick correctly, I'll just go back to this shot and regrind the movement for a little bit to give my muscle memory a little refresher. If you have any other specific flicks, mechanics, or training you'd like to have covered, please let me know in the comments down below, and until next time, get out there and work on those flicks.